الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس Muhammad's companions were so obsessed with their prophet being white that they wouldn't merely say, as they often did, that he was white. They would take things a step further by going body part by body part, describing the whiteness of his shins, and the whiteness of his thigh, and the whiteness of his leg, and the whiteness of his stomach, and the whiteness of his forearms, and the whiteness of his armpits, and the whiteness of his cheeks. If Muhammad's companions were this obsessed with Muhammad's epic whiteness, it was clearly an insult to falsely claim that he was black. And this is exactly what Muslim scholars concluded. Hence, we read in Qadi Ayad's Ash-Shifa, one of Islam's most popular and respected books on Muhammad's life and teachings, page 287, Ahmed ibn Suleiman, Sahnun's companion, said that whoever says that the Prophet was black is killed. The Prophet was not black. So again, David Woodfield, uh, since if, if you look down where I underlined it, it says Habib ibn al Rabi'a said that it is disbelieved to alter his description, meaning to alter the Prophet's description and its details. The one who does that openly is an unbeliever. He is asked to repent. The one who conceals it is a heretic and is killed without being asked to repent. So basically if a person goes out and spreads lies, especially if he's a scholar, he goes and spe spreads lies and says that the Prophet Muhammad was black to misguide people or said that the Prophet Muhammad was white, meaning in Roman white, or he looked Asian for example, or he looked Caucasian white, then this person is also committing disbelief because he's altering the description. If the person says that the Prophet had, for example, green eyes, that's altering description, that's lying. He's also under that category. If he had a blue eyes, the same exact thing. If he had a blonde hair or blonde beard, that's the same exact thing. If he does not look Arab, that's the exact same thing. So it's not only consisting of black. And it's mostly those who want to um, insult the Prophet Muhammad because basically the Arabs long ago uh, used to be racist. Right, even before Islam, they were racist towards black people, so they insulted black people. So whoever uses it as an insult, not a person who's ignorant, right, but a person who uses it as an insult and insults the Prophet saying, oh, he's dirty, or he looks white, or he's an orphan as well, he is to be killed. And this is the same thing in the Old Testament. Whoever apostates is to be killed. Whoever uh, blasphemes God and says bad things about God or about his prophets is to be killed. Take an example, for example, uh, the children who cursed, who said to, who made fun of a prophet Elijah in the Bible, who is a prophet according to Christians. They made fun of him and called him bald head. Elijah pronounced a curse on them in the name of God and God sent uh, female bears to eat them, to eat these children, to kill them. So that's basically how... It is the so same thing in his religion. Now, as for David Wood claiming that uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was white, as in Caucasian white, as in the whites in America, or whites in Canada, or whites in Europe, this is completely wrong because sometimes what we Arabs call white is actually dark. What we call abyad, for example, can be applied for one person who is dark skinned. For example, who is lighter than the other? I was watching, for example, uh, one time I was watching a Indian movie, and there was a husband. There was a man. He was very, very dark, and he had a wife. His wife was dark. She was very darker than an Arab, but she's not as dark as him. And the guy said, "I married you because you have fair skin." And then I was looking at the woman. She's very dark. She's not even fair, right? But it seems out that in Indian language, in Indian places, what we, what the whites see as Indian, for example, because the North Indians say that they, they are like lighter in color, right? So they are whiter in color. But sometimes you can, you know, you can see the brown in them, right? Because if you, if, if a white person were to look at them, you would say, no, they don't look like us, right? They look browner. If I were to take, for example, a, a white person and does a white person, does a white European person look like this person? This guy is Arab, this guy is from Oman. This guy was the Sultan of Oman. 
right? Of Oman. This guy was sort of Oman. Look, his skin is dark. Little bit you can see it's, it's dark. It's not like you know black or very very dark, but his skin is asmar, which is what we call in Arabic asmar, meaning in between, not too white, not too brown, in between, you know, lightish brown. This is what we call asmar. So this, for example, looks asmar, right? Um, this is how an Arab looks. Does he look anything like a white person? No way. No way. This guy cannot be compared to this guy. This guy is whiter. Look at his skin is much more whiter, much more lighter, right? There is no. This guy doesn't look like the Arab here, like the true, uh, pure Arab, right? The true. Where, where is that? Where is that picture? Like for example, like this guy. For example, he doesn't look like this guy. This guy is like a little bit. You can see his skin's kind of darker, right? This is the guy, Sultan of Oman. This is skin. It's kind of darker, right? Or let's say, for example, like you know, let's let's go with, uh, you know, let's go with with this guy, for example. Where was he? This guy right here. This guy's skin is darker, right? This guy doesn't look like a white person from America or from some other place, right? This guy, for example, is also dark, right? So. What is meant by that is that they're trying to, uh, you know, he's trying to manipulate things. He's trying to say that he's trying to compare the Prophet Hassan to a European, which is not true. A fair skin of an Indian, as I said before, the guy who was very dark called his Indian wife, who's dark but not as dark as him. He said, "I married you because of your fair skin, right?" And for me, an Arab, if I look at her, I would say, "No, her skin is dark, right?" Because compared, you know, comparing me to her, or like how I view as fair according to my Arab culture, right, is something else. Fair skin is not too white, not too brown. It's in between. You can see, you can see, like you know, he can he can be like kind of uh, darkish, right? He can have a tinge of dark, but he cannot be very dark, right? So this is what I I may call fair, right? This is what may I call white. This is what I call white, right? I don't call this white. I don't. For me, an Arab, I don't call this white, right? And even you can see the structure of an Arab is not like a European. It's not like a white person, like a white European, for example, or a Caucasian, because you can see the facial features of an Arab person. We all have different things. You know, there might be an Arab guy who whose skin is very white, right? But he doesn't look any way compared to a European. His facial features, his bone structure is different. It looks like an Arab, right? Let's say, for example, this Yemeni, this guy here, right? Here, right? This guy is not that white. Right? This guy kind of has a, a, a way to looking at, like an Arab, right? I can say, let's say, for example, uh, <laughs> right now I'm talking about skins. I don't want to talk about that because I want to. Uh, get with the thing okay anyway let's just go back here I don't know why this thing came here right now come on bro stop wasting my time get lost okay so here we can see for example in Sahih al-Bukhari narrated Anas Allah Wasallam was neither very tall nor short neither absolutely white nor deep brown right he was not very white right وَلَيْسَ بِالْآدَمِ And he's not, uh, he's not deep brown. Adam means deep brown. And most scholars say that uh, Adam alayhi salam was called Adam because he was created from clay. And the clay color is, uh, is brown, right? So, so this is how the Arabs say Adam means, you know, a person's you know, a person's skin is Adam, meaning very uh, brown, right? So the Prophet was not white, not very white, or nor very brown. And the Prophet did not look like a white European, right? In other hadiths, he, he has, uh, his eyes were black, he had uh, black hair, right? Black beard, black hair, right? So he didn't look anything like the... And even the Arabs used to say, if they see another... The Arabs used to call the Romans Banu Asfar. 
Banu al Asfar. Banu means the sons. Asfar mean yellow. Banu al Asfar means sons of the yellow. Why did they call them sons of the yellow? Because the Romans or the or uh, the Euro Europeans had a blondish skin, right? Or white skin, and his, their skin kind of looks, you know, when they ha and they have blonde hair, right? When they have blonde hair and they have their skin kind of looks like it's blondish, uh, yellowish, kind of like that. So this is why they call them Banu Asfar, right? If we see another hadith in uh, uh, in Jama' at Tirmidhi, as you can see here, the Prophet Muhammad was of average height, right? Not very tall, nor very short. He had a good build, brown in complexion, right? Here it says Asmarul Laun. Asmar in Arabic means brownish, right? Not as very dark brown like uh, like some Africans say about themselves or like Indian, right? But like they have, you know, like I showed from here, right? This guy, for example, he looks kind of whitish, right? Not, not too much. But like I said, kind of brown like this, right? Um, like an Arab type, right? Not like an Indian type. So for example, if I if I say like, for example, Asmar Laun, brown skin, right? Asmar Laun is brown skin, not brown as we call an Indian, but you know, like not very deep brown, right? Like a kind of Arab brown. So, um, yeah, this is also, there was one companion who was, who they called Suhaib al-Rumi. Al-Rumi means the Roman. Why did they call him the Roman? Why did the Arabs call him Roman? Well, you can see here, for example, it was a former slave in the Byzantine Empire who went to become a companion of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, member of the early Muslim community. So Hayb al was a companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was born in Iraq, right? And he has the has is been described, right? As you can see, I'm gonna get to the to that part. Uh, yeah, so basically, Suhaib was taken to one of the slave markets of the Byzantine Empire. Thereafter, he passed from one master to another, remaining for another 20 years in Byzantine land as a slave. He grew up speaking Greek, the language of the Byzantine Empire, and practically forgot Arabic. Right? At the first opportunity, Suhaib escaped from bondage and headed for Mecca, which was considered a place of asylum. There... There, meaning in Mecca, in the Arab areas, people called him a Rumi, meaning the Roman, because of his background, including of his Roman accent and blonde hair. So they called him like that because he had blonde hair and he is white, basically, right? So this is why they called him a Rumi, and he had, you know, basically blue eyes, right? So that's why he was called Suhaib a Rumi, right? Which his real name is actually. Um, Suhaib bin Sinan, right? That's his real name. But they called him a Rumi, the Roman, because he looks Roman. He looks white. He doesn't look like the Arabs. And the Arabs used to, uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, especially the Bedouins, they used to show pride because of their brown skin. Right? So, what is called white in, white in Arabic? For Arabs, in general, a person with brown skin is called white. A person whose skin is dark, very, very dark, is called dark-skinned, for example. So one that is, uh, you know, more darker than many of the Arabs, this is called brown skin to the Arabs. So as you have seen, this is what we have see, uh, shown here. Now going back to the hadith, which says, for example, that, um, you know, um, if we look here, Al-Qadi Ayyad says in Al-Shifa, in the book of Shifa, it should be noted, may Allah bless us and you, that everyone who reveals the Prophet, reviles the Prophet Muhammad or criticizes him or attributes some shortcoming to him in his character, lineage or religious commitment or any of his attributes or hints at that or likens him to something by way of revealing him. So if a person wants to liken the Prophet Muhammad to something in a way for revealing reviling him for insulting him for example i can say uh, no, uh, no i'm not gonna say that but for example there's a person who says uh who insults the prophet by calling him a brownie although the prophet is brown skinned right this guy means by that doesn't mean that the prophet is brown and skin doesn't mean it in a way that okay i'm describing the prophet i'm not insulting him but he he insults the prophet by that way 
then this person has apostated and is killed right if a person says for example the uh, not only the skin of the prophet but if he says oh the prophet is is like you know is a bedouin meaning that he meant by that by insulting him or said that the prophet is an orphan in a way of insulting him right if the person the arabs used to insult the prophet by saying rabibu abi talib rabibu abi talib means basically means the one who abu talib raised they meant by that by insulting him right for example if a person calls uh, you know the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as uh, as uh, let's say for example if a person uh, calls him uh, an orphan by way of reviling him by way of insulting him although the prophet was an orphan right you can say that the prophet is an orphan but if you mean it in a way you say you have to tell the person what do you mean by calling the prophet an orphan are you meaning it in an insult matter or are you meaning it in this way right so this is what is meant by that right disrespecting him belittling him uh, derogating him or him or finding fault with him is reviling is reviling him and comes under the same ruling as one who reviles him and should be executed the same applies to the one who attributes to him anything that does not befit his status by way of criticism so as you can see whoever attributes to the prophet muhammad you know some things that let's say for example a person comes he's ignorant and he's explaining the prophet muhammad and he misunderstood something right about the Prophet Muhammad He did not mean it in a way of insulting. He made a mistake. He said to the people something about the Prophet Muhammad that is different than what he the Prophet is, right? But this person didn't mean to insult the Prophet, right? He made a mistake by that. This guy is safe, right? This is ignorance. He should be told about it. And then that person should, you know, basically just repent and continue on, move on. But a person who goes and says something, as you can see, anything that does not befit his status by way of criticism, notice how they said by way of criticism so basically he's criticizing him he's intending to do it then this person is killed because this person is intending to insult right goes under the same category right so basically what i'm trying to say is that the prophet muhammad was uh, those who called him black the arabs as i said before the arabs had still even when they became muslim they were not perfect even some of the companions were still insulting towards were still kind of racist until the prophet muhammad kind of taught them and they stopped becoming racist right like let's say for example like like this hadith right here i'm going to show you the hadith right about uh, you know um, um yeah so in sahih al-bukhari narrated al Ma'roor that at a rabada I met Abu Dhar who was wearing a cloak and his slave too was wearing a similar one. I asked about the person for it, about the reason for it. He replied, I abused a person by calling his mother with names. The Prophet ﷺ said to me, O Abu Dhar, do you abuse him by calling his mother with bad names? You still have some characteristics of ignorance. Your slaves are your brothers, meaning that he was calling, you know, his slave. This is why Abu Dhar was wearing the same cloak as his slave to show equality, right? Because basically he insulted him before, right? So he basically called the slave, you know, racist terms, right? So the Prophet said, your slaves are your brothers and Allah has put them under your command. So whoever has a brother under his command should feed him of what he eats and dress him of what he wears. Do not ask them slaves to do things beyond their capacity. And if you do so, then help them, right? So this is basically showing the equality of the Prophet Muhammad in the races and that a person should not insult somebody else. And as you can see that Abu Dhar before insulted them, you know, called them racist terms, right? Called the slave, you know, his mother in other, uh, if you see other uh, traditions, he says he called, his, he called his slave, you son of a black woman. And he meant it by that to insult his slave. So the Prophet Muhammad said you still have, you know, characteristics of ignorance. You can find it in other sources. But this shows that the justice of the Prophet Muhammad right? And that the Arabs, even before Islam, were, were very racist towards the black people. They didn't treat the slaves good. They, you know, they basically said bad things about slaves, right? The Arabs didn't have that type of racism towards the Romans, right? 
uh, this is why they called them that they didn't have that type of racism towards towards the Romans, right? Because basically they didn't have Roman slaves, right? As much as they had black slaves. And basically at that time, the slaves were mostly from Africa, everywhere. You know, the white people in America, they brought African slaves. Uh, the Europeans black brought African slaves. Uh, every, every single race considered that the Africans were basically, you know, the slaves. They took from them slaves. Because slavery was so common in Africa that people had to get them from all around the, the places or the countries. So this is why they were slaves. For example, you can see um, Bilal ibn Rabah, the companion of Prophet Muhammad before Islam, he was basically the slave of, uh, of an infidel who is called, who was the worst enemy of Islam and died as an infidel. Uh, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, right? And Umayyah ibn Khalaf used to beat him, used to call him names, used to be racist towards him. Uh, you know, make fun of him. This is why the Prophet Muhammad SAW mostly says, or why the Arabs mostly at that time says, whoever calls the Prophet Muhammad SAW as black, intending the, intending racist terms since the Arabs used to uh, call black people uh, ill names or call somebody who's black, meaning that he's insulting that person. And it was mostly done towards the black people, right? So the Prophet, so by that context, the person should take it by context that whoever calls a prophet black, as these as these Arabs who uh, are racist towards black people or those who uh, mean filthy things about black people, right? Meaning in an insult way, then basically that person should be killed. So, uh, so by that we have seen this hadith. Uh, now I will go uh, to show you that, for example. Um, in Sahih al-Bukhari that Abu Sufyan said Heraclius sent for me when I was in Ilya, Jerusalem when he asked for the letter of Allah's mission Sallallahu and when he had finished its reading there was a great hue and cry around him and the voices grew louder and we were asked to quit the place when we were turned out I said to my companions the cause of Ibn Abi Kapsha meaning the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has become conspicuous as the king of Bani al Asqur is afraid of him. So basically, Abu Sufyan was saying that the Prophet Muhammad has, you know, has, you know, basically struck fears in the hearts of people. Even the king of Bani al Asqur, meaning uh, Heraclius, the Roman king, Bani al Asqur means the son of the yellows, is afraid of him, right? Basically, the Romans are afraid of him, the sons of the yellows, meaning the Romans, the blonde people. Are afraid from him, are afraid of him, right? So uh, let us go now to uh, and and uh, most people say that oh why does Prophet Muhammad SAW, um, call Ethiopians? He said obey your leader even if it was a Ethiopian whose head looks like a raisin. Did the Prophet Muhammad SAW mean ill towards that? No, he did not mean that because the, it was known at that time that the Arabs were racist and they the According to them, they saw the Ethiopians as looking as, as you know, kind of like raisin heads. So they basically used to call them names. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, obey your leader, even if his head looks like that, even if, even if it appears to you like that, right? In another hadith, the Prophet, in Sahih al-Bukhari as well, the Prophet said, obey your leader, even, obey your Ethiopian or your black leader, even if, he has a mutilated face, so his face is mutilated, it looks mutilated, you should obey him. He was not being racist to that. He said this This is a quality, this is how they they look like to him in a view that they did not, he did not mean it in a racist way. He basically meant that even if they look like that in a way that you don't like, or, or uh, in a way that you see them, in a way that you don't like, you should obey them. We can see that in Sahih al-Bukhari as well, narrated Abu Hurair, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hour will not be established until you fight with the Turks. Who are the Turks? People with small eyes, okay, so he's describing them, red faces and flat noses. Their faces will look like shields coated with leather. So, leather. so now people will say, oh, he's racist because he said their faces will look like shields coated with leather. No, that's not being racist. He's describing it to his companions. He's saying it's, their faces appear as shields, right? It's, now, people who are racist against Islam, you say, oh, no. Um, he's saying that, you know, these people, their faces look like leathers or coated shields, 
with leverage, right? He's describing, he's basically describing them both. He's basically making his companions know that this is how was the description of the Arabs long ago. It was not like, you know, basically like today we can say, oh, they have small eyes and, you know, like that. Or like, it's, it's not making fun of them. He's just giving the quality. He's describing them with, you know, their faces look like kind of shields. This is how they appear, right? And the Arabs understood how faces of shields were look like. So the Prophet has described it to them in the way that befits, right? Um, okay, so let's go back. So... Or who uses foolish words when talking about him or criticizes him because of some of the calamities and disasters that befell him or tries to undermine his position because of some of his human characteristics. This is all who's saying that Al-Qadi Ayyad, the, the scholar of Islam, in his book Ash-Shifa, right? So, as you can see, undoubtedly using the word Bedouin, so a Bedouin is an Arab basically. I am a Bedouin. I I have roots of Bedouins. My grandmother is Bedouin, and I have root of Bedouin. And my grandfather, my grandmother's parents are also Bedouin, meaning that because the Bedouins long ago at uh, you know the Bedouins basically in my country used to marry from one another only. They don't marry anyone outside until the generation you know basically passed. So whoever uses the word Bedouin or describing the Prophet Muhammad as a Bedouin is obviously a kind of belittling him and criticizing him. Basically a person who says the Prophet is a Bedouin in a way to criticize him. And I have a story for that. Um, when my grandmother, uh, she's a Bedouin, she was married to my grandfather. Uh, my gran grandfather is not a Bedouin. When the, his family saw that and his people saw that, they basically started to um, call my, uh, my, my, tell my grandfather, look at this guy, he married a Bedouin woman. So they basically started to criticize my gran grandmother. Sometimes my, grandfa my grandfather, when he is in a fight with my grandmother, he calls her, you Bedouin, right? And he starts to bring up verses from the Quran that, Al-A'rabu ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa He says that the Bedouins are the worst in kufr, in disbelief, and in nifaq, in hypocrisy. Which in the next verse afterwards it says that from the Bedouins, from the Arab who uh, believes in Allah and the last day and the messenger of, and these people, you know, basically enter paradise, right? Because they're not all the Bedouins are the same. So here by that they mean when describing the Prophet as a Bedouin, because describing someone as a Bedouin is derogatory. As it implies ignorance and roughness, whereas the Prophet Muhammad was guided and taught by the Lord of the heaven and the earth, right? So, and now we said in Sharh Muslim, the people of the desert are the Bedouins among whom ignorance and harshness are prevalent. Hence, it says in the hadith, whoever lives in the desert will become harsh. Al Badiya, the desert, Al Bedouin refers to that which is outside the city, etc., etc., right? So the scholars have ruled that every description which, which detracts from the status of the Prophet Muhammad is kufr. Even if it does not state it clearly. Ibn Wahab married the Imam Malik said whoever says that the cloak of the Prophet Muhammad was dirty intending thereby to criticize him is to be executed. So intending by that whenever a person intends by criticizing saying oh you're a Bedouin intending to criticize him and knowing that the Prophet is not a Bedouin it's basically, uh, you know, intending to criticize him is to be executed, right? Even if he says that the cloak of the Prophet Muhammad was, is dirty, intending to criticize the Prophet is to be executed. Now, afterwards, Ahmed ibn uh, in, in Abi Sulaiman, one of the Maliki scholars, said, whoever says that the Prophet Muhammad was black is to be executed. So as you can see, this is all about criticism. When you take it in context, it's not about something else. It's not about, you know, Black, being racist towards black people. No, it's basically since the Arabs at that time used to be racist towards the blacks and called, oh, you black person or oh, oh you slave or oh, you son of that or that. When a person calls a prophet black intending to criticize him and he knows that the prophet is not black, this person is to be killed. But if a person, for example, asks, oh, that was the prophet black or was he white or was he this or was he that, right? This person is asking a question, right? Or basically just asking a scholar, was the Prophet black, or was he this, or was he that, or was he... This is not a person to be executed. This is a person 
you know, to basically make him understand. After he understands and then goes back and says the Prophet is black or the Prophet is white or this or that, this guy is going against, you know, the description of the Prophet Muhammad Right? So this person is to be executed because he's basically saying that if he were to meet the Prophet Muhammad if he were to meet him when he's alive, he would basically reject him because of how his description is. Because his description is not black. So... <clears throat> This is what is meant by that, meaning that taking another person as a prophet, meaning this person has apostated because he rejected the Prophet Muhammad for his descriptions, right? So, um, yeah. So, what was I gonna say? Yeah, also there's a thing I wanna talk about. In Lebanon, in Lebanon there are Bedouins as well, right? But we see one person who's not a Bedouin from Lebanon who's actually a Christian, Saudi Kuwait and Bahrain. This happened in May. It happened a couple of you know of days ago this year on when they were debating on life and I heard about it. Saudi Kuwait and Bahrain summoned Lebanese ambassadors over ministers Bedouin comments. So this guy was you know being racist towards Saudis and calling them Bedouins and saying why should I listen to a Bedouin, right? When they were having just a dialogue. So as you can see The Saudi guest was criticizing the president for empowering the Iran-backed Lebanese armed group Hezbollah and providing a political cover that enabled the party to strengthen, strengthen its grips over the Lebanese government. So it's basically criticizing him because of political matters, not because of race, not because of who he is. Then this Lebanese guy said, I won't accept this. I am in Lebanon and I'm being insulted by a Bedouin. Mr. Wahbi said in a derogatory reference to nomadic, nomadic Arab tribes that have historically inhabited the Arabian Peninsula and other parts of the Middle, uh, Middle East, right? So as you can see, this guy, there's people who are racist, right? They call others Bedouins to degrade them, right? Not to, not because, okay, he's Saudi. He's Bedouin. Okay, he's Bedouin, right? You describe him as Bedouin because he is Bedouin. But when you describe him as, uh, you know, uh, Bedouin in meaning in a racist way or in a way to insult him, then this is understood as insult. Which person like this who were to call the, if you were to call the Prophet as a Bedouin, he would be killed as well. This is called an insult, right? Because he meant it in an insulting way. Of course, this guy may be a Bedouin from Saudi Arabia, right? He is, they're Bedouins in Saudi Arabia. They're basically Bedouins. That's true, okay. But if you call a person, uh, if you say, for example, I won't accept this, I won't be listening to a person who's black or a person who's from Africa or for a person who's from, who lives in jungles, right? Basically Africans or Indians or like that, right? This person, by that, he's, he's meaning that he's degrading the people, right? Although they do live in jungles, okay, he lives. He sees a person that comes from a jungle and tells him that. He says, I won't be accepting this from a person who comes from a jungle. Basically, he's degrading him. So by that, he's... This is showing racist things, right? By that way. So this is how it should be understood in context, right? Um, and they say, for example, the Fuqaha of the Andalus ruled that Ibn Hatim was to be executed and crucified because of the testimony against him that he disrespected the Prophet Muhammad and called him during his debate the orphan. Was the Prophet an orphan? Yes, he was an orphan. But what did he mean by saying he was an orphan in the debate? Just like that Lebanese person says, a Bedouin. Okay, he's Bedouin, but what did he mean by that? Did he mean it in a stereotypical way? Of course he did, because he said, I won't be accepting an opinion of a person who's Bedouin. And so on, and claimed that this was not deliberate and that if he had the means he would have eaten good food and so on so they say similarly i say uh, all the above were mentioned in qadi abu uh, qadi iyad in a shifa again he said then i then he said similarly i say that the ruining ruling on the one who belittles him the prophet or criticizes him for tending sheep did the prophet have some ten sheep yes there's a hadith sahih hadith in sahih bukhari that every prophet has tended sheep. So, but if a person mean it in a bad way, like Abu Jahl used to call Abdullah bin Mas'ud the Sahabi when he became Muslim, he used to call him, he used to call him Ra'il Ghanim, right? In an insult way, meaning the one who tends sheep.
or for making mistakes in prayer or for forgetting or for being bewitched or for being wounded or for some of his armies being defeated or for for um, for being harmed by his enemies or for going through some hardship or for loving his wives the ruling on all of that for the one who intends thereby to belittle him is that he should be executed like I said before those people who say oh your prophet like the Christians your prophet has been bewitched he's, he's, he has Satan in him right or he the prophet okay was the prophet wounded in the battles yes there's many narrations and Sahih narrations that say the prophet was wounded in many battles in battle of Uhud, for example, take that. But if a person is saying, oh, your prophet was wounded, he's making fun. Or he was going through hardship. Or he lived in the desert in a harsh life. Right? Or for loving his wife, for example, and Yadu Bilas saying that, oh, he did this and that. And, you know, intending by that to belittle them, right? Not, not a person says, oh, the prophet in battle of Uhud, he got wounded by the kuffar. He, he meant by that, he was telling basically a story. Right? Or basically he's saying something about the Prophet I'm not intending by that to uh, insult him. But if he meant by that to insult him, then he should be executed. And calling him a Bedouin is an obvious lie. Because he lived in Mecca, then migrated to Medina, which is the best cities of the entire world. Right? So basically, yeah, basically changing some things about the Prophet Muhammad knowing it. Right? If a person comes and says, oh, was... Um, uh, says by mistake the prophet was a Bedouin, right? He did not know he was Jahil. You tell him no, he was not a Bedouin. If he insists, then you show him proof, clear proof. And if he says, if he repents, then he's basically guided. But if he means to change the things about the prophet and call him a Bedouin, by that, in in a way of disrespecting him, then this is a uh, person to be killed, basically. So. Uh, there has been also, if you go to islamweb.net, islamweb.net actually in a book, uh, in Kitab al-Shifa, right, the one that David Wood was using, in the book of Shifa, it has many things about it and um, it also says that Basically, anyone who insults the Prophet Muhammad is a kafir, and he's killed. And some said that he he's not asked to seek repentance. Um, uh, there, there, there is one about uh, Abu Muhammad ibn Abi Zaid. He killed a person who heard who he heard uh, that. He was, he was saying in between the people, he was describing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And when a man, a man came who looked ugly, who had an ugly face and an ugly beard. So this man, when he was describing the Prophet, he stopped and said, If you look at this guy who has an ugly face and ugly beard, this is the one who looks like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Turiduna ta'rifuna sifatahu, do you want to know his attribute? This is the uh, this is the attribute of the person who's walking in front of you, meaning the, the guy with the ugly face and ugly beard, beard, right? So yeah, and by that he lied, and he meant by that to insult the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. And whoever calls the Prophet Muhammad Sallam as black is to be killed, meaning in an assault way. Uh, there is one of the people who actually um, was saying something and. When he was saying, um, he mentioned something, uh, a he mentioned something that is um, uh, filthy words. So he said, so that guy told him when he heard him, he said, why do you say you enemy of Allah? He said, do you mean by that that the Prophet Muhammad is the scorpion? Right? He, he, so he meant by that, like he meant by that in, you know, saying filthy words, and he meant by that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this is what I basically have to show 
that when things are taken in context people basically go to the ulama and say no no this guy was wrong for calling for saying that whoever calls the prophet black should be killed because this guy is a racist well no you have to look through the source don't just trust david wood because david wood did not show the full source did not show in what context is meant by that you should look at the full context search the full context and then say judge if that scholar was wrong or right right but the scholars here clearly meant that this doesn't have to do with racism they clearly said that whoever attributes the prophet muhammad to a white guy as well right or a caucasian guy or a european looking guy taking away the attributes saying his eye color was blue and insisting on that insulting him when degrading black people because basically as you guys have heard many people who have been racist who have been um, insulted were mostly black people in the whole world so this is basically a stereotype there's nobody that doesn't insult black people there's indians there's arabs there's um, europeans there's whites there's asians basically there has been a lot of racism towards black people from many centuries ago even at the time of the arabs you know, they will be taken as slaves at a time of ignorance, a time of jahiliyyah, there will be bad things happened to them. Uh, they degraded the black people, they made them low lives. So this is why the intention of a person who called the Prophet black, meaning that he wants to degrade him, he wants to imply that this he's a slave, he's like a slave, he's like a black slave. So a person should always take things in context, right? A person who calls the Prophet Muhammad you know, for example, other than description that he has to be, like, oh, he looks European, or he's European, or his, he looks like a Byzantine person. He should, of course, this guy should be killed, right? Because the Prophet has not has not been attributed these things, right? If the person says, oh, the Prophet's hair was uh, black or blonde. Now, first of all, what I'm meaning, if a person says, oh, it's blonde, or to, to, to switch to make the Prophet, oh, this is our superior race, so we want to make the Prophet like us right this is what is meant by that but if a pair people were discussing about the hadith seeking knowledge by the asking questions was that did that mean by that that he's white or he's black or is that or this or that this is something else this doesn't fall into under the category of insulting this is something of seeking knowledge right but a person who does it out of ignorance as well as he's you know he doesn't he didn't mean to intend to tell the prophet to criticize him this is also you know this is also, you know, he's the person is not punished for that, right? Until he gets the knowledge, okay? So this is what I basically have to say, right? Um, yeah, so this is what basically in context, when we take things in context, this is how it is done. And David Wood was wrong by that, okay? David Wood, according to his Bible, it says that whoever apostates, and one of the reasons, he should be killed, right? And one of the apostasy reasons is whoever blasphemes God. Right in his religion, his God says, "Whoever curses Yahweh, this guy left the religion completely." Right? <laughs> how how can you curse God and still be, you know, uh, a follower of God? Right? So this is basically an apostasy, and a person should be killed by that in his religion as well. Okay.